Hey, this is Brandon, and this will be my chart review for Monday, February 13th. Before I uh, get started today, um, I want to recommend a blog post that I really liked. Um, this is adamhgrimes.com slash blog, and you can see the rest. Um, subjective chart reading. So in summary, he studied retracements to see if there's any real magic in the Fibonacci ratios and what he found was you could get a retracement that went anywhere from 20 to 100 percent and you see the curve here so that's a lot of variation um, and how much of a bounce can you count on yeah the highest one was uh, somewhere around the, the magical 61.8% Fibonacci uh, retracement, but <clears throat> there's almost as many bounces that happen much further, much deeper, or much shallower. Um, so he's basically, and I don't want to, I don't want to misrepresent him, um, but what I took away from it is that there is. Um, you know, you just can't take every FIB, every 61.8% FIB retracement. Similarly, you can't just take every single 34 bounce or every single T20 or every single 89 bounce, etc. You have to have some subjective ability, some discretionary talent, uh, in my belief anyway, of reading the price action, reading the chart, and <clears throat> making a decision whether to accept or pass on uh, any of your given setups. Um, will you take that next 34B or that next T20 or will you skip it? Um, I think the, the secret sauce, if you will, is in that ability to to know which ones are, are more likely to work out versus which ones are more likely to fail. So that being said, I have a slightly different setup on my charts today. I still have my 233 and I still have my 610, um, but I've also added the MACD BBs on the 987 tick and the 1597 tick um, just trying to get a better sense of, of um, how the MACDs, how the BBs respond um, with the price action and, you know, try to get a, a feel for what I'm looking for to confirm or deny my, my uh, entry setups. So with that, I will expand this out take a look at the trades today um, there was a data issue with CQG and AMP and multi charts um, so I had these strange candles here um, and so my charts weren't really accurate until well into the session um, so I can't really show you what the price action looked like I, I do know that uh, in the live trading room Joey took two trades. He took a short somewhere around 816 Eastern um, and took a six tick scalp. And he went short at 45, uh, 5345 and got out at 5339. So basically just a tick above that low. Um, <clears throat> and he also took a short right here and closed it for a four tick profit and those were the only two trades so you had a P&L of hundred dollars gross minus uh, commissions on two trades as far as my own personal trading I my 200 EMA was still not in the right place at this point um, but on Joey's chart the 200 was right there um, and we had a close just below the eight. Obviously, my eight EMA is in the right place as soon as I have eight legitimate candles. 
Um, but we just barely closed below the 8 there, so I considered that to be a 200 bounce. Um, let's see what it looked like on the BBs. So it was it was here um, and kind of hooking there. Um, of course, at the entry point, yeah, it's hard to say. You can see where my cursor is on that left window. Um, on the other windows or the other time frames, I mean, the only thing I can say about it is we're still below the zero line on both of those. So. I grabbed the short there and took an eight tick profit. Um, we had a 34 bounce right here. The close under the eight was there and I went short right there. Um, it looked like if you look at the 610, it looked like the BBs were gonna continue going down but they didn't, obviously. <clears throat> um, and the 34 bounce, if you look at the 233, there's a good distance below the zero line on the BBs. Um, so I thought that was a legitimate setup, and it just didn't work out. I took a minus 7, and then these were looking like, to me, like they were riding the rail up, and we had um, quite a bit of divergence here, bullish divergence here on the... Um, 610, <clears throat> excuse me, of course my chart could have still been off, but we made some lows here, and the BBs were way down here, and then we made almost the same lows here, uh, and the BBs were way up here and kind of curling upward. So I thought, well, that looks like a good T20, um, a nice clean pass of the 8 up above the 34, nice couple of nice bullish candles. So Right after I got stopped out of my short, I took a long and just immediately went right against me and stopped me out for a, another minus seven. Um, this trade here was basically it was a late to the party, 34 bounce. Um, I felt like it, I didn't feel like, but it seemed like we were making like we were breaking out below this low and I just thought prices were about to plunge downward. Um, so I, I went short right there. Um, it is kind of a T25 also. There's a little pullback. Uh, and then you see my platform. I, and I confirmed with some other traders on Skype there was no, no trading here at 5309. Um, <clears throat> but yet my... Uh, platform decided to take me out of the trade. So this trade here where I went short doesn't really count. Um, I, I still would have been in this trade because in real life I wouldn't have been stopped out there. There was no trading that took place there. And then I just counted it as a plus eight because my target was down here. Then I took a long right here, same deal. Uh, I thought we were getting a nice um, <clears throat> T20 here, nice pass through there, nice um, bullish move here, and there, there was some divergence. Note the lower low and the higher low on the BBs. Um, and let's look at what that looks like on the higher time frame. Um, so here, I thought we were having like a V-shaped um, bottom here. And it just didn't work out. So I went long there on the T20 and got stopped out for another minus seven. Then I realized <clears throat> if I zoom out here, I realized, hey, I mean, <laughs> we've got a definitely a definite downtrend here. Confirmed the slope. Everything's sloping down. And here's a beautiful uh, 89 bounce. We we. Spent one candle close above the 89 and then right back below it. And here's the close below the 8. Um, so by the time I realized it, well, actually, I was still long. Got stopped out there. And then I was wanting to be short from that price level. So I did. Got short, get short right there. 
And um, I, I believed it if prices broke below this um, low here, I believed we would have a pretty good move. So I actually opened up my target here a bit. I was short from 53. So my, my original 8 tick target was 1 tick above that low which was a nice place to have a target um, but I still believe that uh, that we would get somewhat of a plunge here so I opened up my target just another four ticks and ended up with a quick 12 tick um, scalp there uh, definitely screwed this trade up notice the BB's cruising higher here and notice also, the uh, 610 is starting to fall in line with that. Um, so I went long here based on the T20. Um, actually got a little bit better of an entry. Um, but I really should have just hung on to this trade because this turned into an easy 8-tick winner. Um, but I, I switched and changed uh, based on this t20 short which you know definitely a downtrend we're supposed to take those t20s um but after this one failed i i think i should have just hung on obviously i should have just hung on um i should have uh, bet that the this t20 south would end up being a failure and it was um so my long here was at 87 uh which means my target was at 95 um, and it came all the way up here to 99 so would have been a nice fill there um, this obviously didn't go far enough to stop me out my stop was at 80 even so my stop was down here and this even made a higher low there so um, but at what I ended up doing instead was uh, reversing. So I closed the long position and went short right there. Um, and obviously that was a loser. So I lost three ticks on this long, which really should have been a plus eight. All of this ends up being a total of um, minus two when really it should have just been a plus eight. So that's a 10 tick difference, um, which would have meant a, a nice profit uh, today. But I screwed it up. Um, I got fooled here, uh, which is gonna happen. Um, there's the T20 and closed the long, went short, got stopped out here and bought the T20 North because I believe we were headed higher based on all this price action, the higher highs, the higher lows, and the eight crossing nicely through the, um, I, I believe they had a lot of traders trap right here. So grabbed along here and got an eight tick scalp. And that was my last trade for the day. Um, so, The result for today was, I think I was up like five ticks, but I also took several trades. So there's plus eight, plus one, minus six, plus two, minus five, plus seven, even, and minus three. Yeah, so I was plus five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine trades. So that would be about forty dollars in commissions and fifty dollars in gross profit. So I made like ten bucks today. Um, if I had taken a plus eight instead of a minus two in here, I would have been up. At, you know, two less commissions. It would have been a much better day. But it's all right. It was positive. Um, and any day you make money rather than lose money is a good day, I, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, so that's about it for today. Um, continuing to study the BBs and continuing to gain more screen time and experience with the CL 
which I believe is, is the difference between a samurai trader who's losing money and a samurai trader who's making money. So I do think we have to have some discretion in order to, to be a profitable um, trader with these samurai um, strategies. Okay, so that's about it for me. Thank you for uh, for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video, got something out of it, and I'll be back again most likely tomorrow. Bye-bye.